For Joshua, Esotrism as Principle and as Way, a chapter entitled The Mystery of the Veil, page 62. Like every heavenly being, Mary manifests the universal veil in its function of transmission. She is veil because she is a form, but she is essence by her content and consequently by her message. She is both closed and open, inviolable and generous. She is clothed in the sun because she is clothed in beauty, the splendor of the true. And she is black but beautiful because the veil is both closed and transparent or because after having been closed by virtue of inviolability, it opens by virtue of mercy. The Virgin is clothed in the sun because as veil she is transparent. The light, which is at the same time beauty, is communicated with such a power that it seems to consume the veil and abolish veiling, so that the inward which is the purpose of the form, seems, so to speak, to envelop the form by transubstantiating it. Whoever has seen me has seen God. These words, or their equivalent, are found in the most diverse traditional worlds, and they apply especially also to the, quote, divine Mary, clothed in the sun, because reabsorbed in it, and as it were contained therein. To see God by seeing the divine in human form is in some fashion to see the essence before form. It is to undergo the imprint of the divine content together with that of the human container, and before the latter by reason of the preeminence of the divine. The veil has become light, there is no longer any veil. There's a footnote, number 59, after the words, she is both closed and open, inviolable and generous. The Russian church celebrates a feast of the veil in remembrance of an apparition of Mary at Constantinople, in the course of which the Virgin lifted her luminous veil and held it in a miraculous fashion, above those present. The Russian word pokrov means both veil and intercession. The maya which dissimulates essence is at the same time the maya which communicates graces. And there's a footnote after the words the Divine Mary clothed in the sun because reabsorbed in it and as it were contained therein. The footnote 60 reads as follows. The avatars are, quote, contained in the heavenly logos, which they represent on earth, or of which they manifest a function, as they are likewise contained pre-existentially in the divine names, which diversify the undifferentiated mysteries of the essence, and whose aspects are innumerable. In Sufism, the Blessed Virgin personifies the pre-existential and existentiating Sophia, the Logos, inasmuch as it, quote, conceives creatures, then, quote, engenders them, and finally forms or embellishes them. If Mary thus represents the unmanifested and silent Logos, nigra sum sed formosa, if Mary thus represents the unmanifested and silent Logos, Jesus is the manifested and law-giving Logos. And that phrase in Latin, nigra sum sed formosa, is what we've already had in the text, I am black but beautiful.